I prefer error than bias. Right. In a sense. Right. I prefer, you know, it's like all status. What do statins try to do? They try to find a sample. It may not give the right answer, but what they want is an unbiased sample. That's the crucial thing because error you can deal with in a way. You can allow for that and adjust for that, and you've got ways to deal with it. But bias, if you don't know about it, messes you up regardless. And so I, I want systems that can have error in them. But now, even better, of course, we a system that's not biased and has got some idea of its error rate. And, and so I know that some systems and people are working this a lot so that when it's made, when a system makes a claim, it'll give some idea of its confidence in the claim. And I know, I know I worked on uncertainty in AI in the 1980s. You know, we thought we had it sold. There were conference. The first conference on uncertainty in artificial intelligence was in 1986. You know, I contributed to it for heaven's sakes. It's nearly 40 years ago. Anyway, we thought we'd solved it, but apparently we hadn't. So, you know, because the problems are still there, but they are active problems. And I would also like my system to have some humility and not just to say at the bottom, oh, I make mistakes. Frankly, I don't think that's, that really is 12 year old. You know, that really is 12 year old. I would like something that had some humility and some understanding of its limitations. So, so you talk about the bias on the input side, basically, but what about, what about your own bias and how do you deal with that? Because it seems to me like, even if I had a completely unbiased, accurate tool, if I don't ask it the right question the right way, I'm going to get an answer that I, that is really not appropriate. And cause I'm not really asking a good enough question. Exactly. So I think in actually a really good assistant should also look at the prompts you're, it's being asked and say, you might want to ask this in a different way. I don't think you're exploring it. It would also suggest the prompts. It would have some meta knowledge of what would be a better prompt that could do it. And, uh, and certainly some of the ways the systems are exploring uncertainty is to, when they're asked given a prompt, deliberately they are, you know, find a, a range of prompts that are sort of similar, but not quite worded the same and actually generate those themselves and follow those through and see what the range of answers is they get. And that's really nice because it gives you an idea of the sensitivity or the lack of robustness of the answer to how that question was actually asked. Because you don't want you want a robust response that would that that isn't so dependent on every single little choice of words you might use. So there's all sorts of developments that you know, I think are going on that will appear in the future and will make this stuff even better to use. I mean, I, I you know, I, 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 I try to share anxieties of many people that it can become a, a little bit too easy to use. And of course it can, you know, become a bit too intelligent. And that's why I'm really interested in the, uh, in the system prompts and the, I wouldn't say controls on it, but the, uh, and I, I'm not big on regulating everything, but at least transparency is transparency. Mm -hmm. It's like recommendation algorithms on uh, on social media. You know, I don't, I you know, or, or misinformation on social media. I can't control it. I can't censor them. What people put on YouTube, I mean, it's impossible. You can't censor it. However, what you could have is some transparency about what the recommendations algorithms are. Were, were, was misinformation, you know, de deliberately? which I think it, essentially that is the outcome of it, being pushed to people because it just generates a clicks, it generates attention, it generates that you know, the, the period of attention, which is what every algorithm is trying to get. I like that. I, I love your idea of having somebody else help you with this. Of course, I'm an advisor, and I think that, uh, you know, sometimes we're, we just can't learn everything. I mean, I'm never going to be a statistician for example. So I'm never going to be the one to, you know, come up with those probabilities. Um, mm -hmm. It's not my profession. I mean, your profession, you're really good at that, but you're probably never going to be a tax, you know, a tax professional or an accountant like I am. And so I just want to know, this is where I think we can actually get benefit from, you know, our advisors and the people that we have on our team around us, <laughs> yeah. so that we have other people with different views. If you if you're in the UK, I'd now, even now be asking you for some tax advice on VAT. <laughs> so yeah, we all need help. We all need help. I mean, if you're a doctor, I'd start asking you about my you know different problems. So yeah, we all need help, and I I help people. I like I like doing that. And in the end, you know, you want AI to be. Um, something an assistant an intelligent assistant but with some humility you want you know good advisors know what they don't know and actually warn you of that and know the limitations of their knowledge 
and try to make sure that they don't go beyond uh, what they what they feel confident about. And so that's what you expect from a trustworthy advisor. If you go and talk to somebody, you talk to a doctor, that's what you want. You want him to really do it the best he can, but to admit when he stumped in a sense, or where, there's, where there is real uncertainty and you have got options ahead of you that you might be worth talking to somebody else about or really reflecting on deeper. This is what you would want when you go and see your, your doctor. Well, that's what I want when I talk to AI. I, you know, I, I, I love that. I, I, I go back to what you said earlier, that you want um, the person you're getting the information from to be honest, competent, reliable, and you want to understand their motivation. And, and, and when you look at an advisor, whether it's a doctor, okay, yeah. are they honest? Are they competent? Are they reliable? And what is their motivation? Because you can pretty much tell, is their motivation, I want to help you get better? Or is their motivation, I want to run more tests so that I can make more money, right? Because that's, that could be a different motivation. And so I, I, I think those are really four good uh, things, honest, competent, reliable motivation. I think that's very practical and I really appreciate that, Dave. This is absolutely a terrific topic, a terrific book. Sir David, it's been fabulous having you on the Wealth Ability Show. And uh, any final words for our, our audience? Oh, great, fun. great fun talking to you, honestly. And you know, next time I would like some tax advice, please. That'd be really good. <laughs> you, you got Because remember, we, we do live in uncertainty. And that is the way life is. We can't change that. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the idea of understanding what's behind uh, information uh, is so 